Hello everybody, this is Alex from SoyaChinchow.com and this is a COVID-19 Vaccine Malaysia update. This is a weekly show where we recap the latest developments of the COVID-19 vaccine as well as a national immunization program. By the way, do you know that this vaccine update is also available in Bahasa Melayu? Hi, anda boleh ketahui kemas kini maklumat vaksin COVID-19 dalam Bahasa Melayu di saluran YouTube Soya Chinchow BM. Tekan sahaja pautan di bawah. AstraZeneca vaccines have finally arrived in Malaysia, but is it safe? And what's the story about the local full Finnish Sinovac vaccines? And how much does the national immunization program cost? This and more in this week's episode. Before we begin, here are some highlighted comments from the previous video. Musical Angel One says, My father has first dose on 21st and second jab is scheduled for 12th of May. In the meantime, I have chronic kidney disease which also categorized in phase 2 but still haven't received any notification yet. So please be patient. Hi Musical Angel, thanks so much for sharing. Yes, the vaccination program is still ongoing and the vaccination rate is currently slow because it's dependent on the vaccine supply. The good news is Malaysia will be receiving millions of doses on a monthly basis in the coming months. And according to Khairi Jamaluddin, the minister who's in charge of the COVID-19 vaccination program, we will see more supply than demand starting from June onwards. Next, Zaid Mohammed says, So far, is there any casualty case after taking the vaccine? There are a lot of rumours I heard and the government covers them up. Hi Zaid, so far there's no deaths due to the COVID-19 vaccine in Malaysia so far. Uh, like you said, they're mostly rumours. This include the recent case that a nurse apparently died after receiving her vaccination. And this has been confirmed by the Ministry of Health that this is a heart attack case and it's not caused by the vaccine. There's also another rumoured case of a policeman that have died due to the vaccination, but this is not true and the police has released a statement that is actually alive and is receiving treatment for some heart disease. Flo Jordan, the VARS, V-A-E-R-S.gov in the USA recorded over 230,000 deaths with seven weeks after inoculation of the vaccine. Yes, it's safe and effective, you bodo. Well, the claim that over 230,000 people that have died due to the vaccine is totally not true and this has been widely debunked by several fact-checking platforms. Uh, Verse, or better known as the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, is a platform to report adverse effects but this is not a verified source of information. The website even has a disclaimer that says, Virus report alone cannot be used to determine if a vaccine caused or contributed to an adverse effects or illness. The reports may contain information that's incomplete, inaccurate, coincidental or unverifiable. In a large part, reports to virus are voluntary which means they are subject to biases. Even on the guide to interpret the data on the website also mentions a report to virus generally do not prove that the identified vaccines caused the adverse event described. It only confirms that the reported event occurred sometime after the vaccine was given. No proof that the event was caused by the vaccine is required in order to the virus to accept the report. Virus accepts all reports without judging whether the event was caused by the vaccine. So there you go. Malaysia has received its first batch of 268,800 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines and it will be administered to people aged 60 years old and above. This is a viral vector type of vaccine that's developed in the United Kingdom. Similar to existing vaccines, this requires two doses but it has a longer interval of 28 days between the jabs. There have been concerns about blood clots related to the AstraZeneca vaccines. Several European countries have paused the vaccination but they have actually resumed after they concluded that the benefit of the vaccine far array the risk in old age groups. According to the European Medicines Agency EMA on the 23rd of April, the most serious side effects are very rare cases of unusual blood clots and low blood platelets, which happens in 1 out of 100,000 vaccination. As shown by the EMA, the risk of blood clots are much lower in higher age groups and the vaccines have prevented hospitalization, especially for those aged 60 years and above. In all infected rate groups, the risk is as low as 4 out of 1 million for people aged 80 years and above. Based on that information, the Immunization Committee, or better known as the JKJIV, has said that the vaccines are safe for senior citizens aged 60 years and above. The effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine for those aged under 60 in other countries is still being evaluated by the JKJAV. Health Director General Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah has shared an infographic which highlights the risk of serious side effects from the AstraZeneca vaccine versus deaths by COVID-19, personal injury and road accidents. From the given example, you're more than 5 times likely to die in a road accident versus suffering a serious side effect from the AstraZeneca vaccine. The AstraZeneca vaccines have been approved by the NPRA on the 2nd of March 2021 
and the Ministry of Health has shared that a total of 91 countries have already approved its use. The vaccine doses are supplied from factories in South Korea and Thailand. Hold up, we just got an update that the AstraZeneca vaccines will be excluded from the National Immunization Program. Instead, it will be offered separately and voluntarily on a first-come, first-served basis to all adults aged 18 years old and above. According to Kyrie Jamaluddin, this is done to allay public concerns and to build confidence on the AstraZeneca vaccines. A separate appointment system will be introduced and this will be administered at dedicated vaccination centres. Details of the booking will be announced later and this will be rolled out in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor first. The NPRA has finally approved the local field finished Sinovac vaccines that's processed by Pharma Niaga. This marks achievement in Malaysia as the country always depends on imported vaccine products and plasma. As mentioned previously, Pharma Niaga has received 1,800 litres of the Sinovac vaccines in bulk, which is good enough to produce up to 2.6 million doses. In total, Malaysia has procured a total of 12 million doses of the Sinovac vaccine, which is good enough to cover 6 million people. If you have received the vaccination appointment, you are recommended to accept the original schedule date. You can reschedule, but there's a risk that you might be pushed back in the queue. To reschedule or make changes, you can always call the JKGAV hotline at 1-800-888-828. Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation YB Kari Jamaluddin has shared that the National COVID-19 Immunization Program will cost a total of 5 billion ringgit. According to the breakdown, 3.5 billion ringgit will be spent on the vaccine procurement and logistics. And this is followed by 333 million ringgit for the rental and utilities for the vaccination centers. This also includes 200 million ringgit for allowance for volunteers and 100 million ringgit for cleaning and sanitation. As of 26 April at 11.59 pm, Malaysia has administered a total of 1,335,245 doses. A total of 513,044 people have already completed their vaccinations with two doses. Selangor has the highest completed vaccinations with a total of 71,877 individuals, followed by Sarawak with 52,764 individuals and Perak with 50,737 individuals. In terms of registrations, over 9.3 million people have registered so far. Putrajaya has the highest registration rate at 98.9%, However, Sabah is still the lowest with a registration rate of 15.4%, followed by Kelantan with 25.8%. If you haven't registered for the vaccine, you can do so with the My Sejahtera app or sign up online at vaccinecovid.gov.my. Alternatively, you can call in at 1-800-888-828. To check your registration status, you can check at vaccinecovid.gov.my slash status. That's all for now and if you have any questions on the vaccination program, you can drop your questions down below in the comment section and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Due to the rapid developments of the COVID-19 vaccine, some of this information might be out of date so check out the latest news on soyachicha.com or check out the latest video of the immunization update. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook and don't forget to subscribe us on our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed of our future videos. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.